Brian joins me now. Good morning, Brian, and congratulations on this. Teddy and Booker T., I found it fascinating. It's a very high hurdle for me to pick up a book about TR because I know a lot about TR, but I don't know much about Booker T. So before I get into the specifics, what inspired this book, Teddy and Booker T.? Well, number one, I wanted to move up in time, and I just got out of the Civil War with the President of Freedom Fighter. But before I read about Frederick Douglass and David Blight's biography, and I, the first thing I do is read the biographies of the people. And I read up from slavery, and you literally pick it up when Booker T. Washington was born a slave, nine years old, called to the plantation house, told by Union soldiers, you're free and then goes back to his house where he slept on a dirt floor without shoes his entire life, one meal a day. If he was lucky, his mom hugging him and his brother in tears says, what do we do now? And you had me. And to think this guy became one of the most respected people in America at the time and known around the world and his educational legacy lives on. And he ends up being a person that would attract presidents to speak at the commencement address at Tuskegee. And instead of just getting rich and famous and giving speeches and being an activist, which was fine, not putting it down, all he did was educate people, a thousand in his class at a time, in a time in the Deep South, when a lot of people weren't looking at blacks and whites as equal. Jim Crow was raging. Poll taxes were everywhere. Lynchings were taking place. No justification there. And he said, let me change the perception of a generation and let it start with me. That got me. And then Teddy Roosevelt's all over the story. Uh, you, know, you did a great thing by alternating chapters. And the reason that's a great thing, if there's someone like me with TR who brings a lot to the table, you can just read every other chapter about Booker T and Washington. For example, I did not know how he came up with his last name until I read your book, Brian. You want to tell that story? Yeah, I mean, he had to come up with it. It was in class. He has no last name. He says, I'm just going to pick Washington. His stepfather was Washington. And get this, uh, you. Here's another story is that most people, if people want to take down Washington statue and Jefferson statue, do you know like the most common, when, when newly freed slaves had a chance to pick their last name, the most common name was Washington. They loved him. They looked up to him. He was, he was the founder of their country too. And that's, what, that's why he has no regrets about picking it and glad he did. All right, now, I want to go to the very end. I've got a bunch of questions, and we've got limited time, so I want to get to them. At the very end, you quote a Charles W. Anderson, who I had not known of. So I went and looked him up, and it turns out he's an African-American from Oxford, Ohio, home of Miami University. Bill Hammer ought to know this and talk to you about this. But he went from Oxford to New York City, where he's appointed a collector of revenues by TR. After this uh, amazing dinner that you recount, uh, where T.R. makes Booker T. Washington a promise about putting blacks into office. And Charles Anderson says T.R. and Booker T. Washington were the two greatest men of their time in the white and black races. I, I don't even know where you found that quote, but it does sum up what America thought of them by the time they had both run their, their races. You know what I did is I actually started, I wanted to validate my book, and I have to pitch it, even though I'm friendly with the publisher, have some success. I had to validate my book, and he was the one I pulled out. And I go, okay, now let me find out who he is. I did exactly what you just did. And I go, excellent. So I go, perfect. And that's how I did it forensically. And then I found the quote from Booker T. Washington, if I could rememberize it correctly. Uh, he said, aside from Lincoln, no one's done more for, uh, for, they would say Negro back then, we would say black, uh, for the black race in our country tried to do more than Teddy Roosevelt. And I go, there's my selling point. I have the words of Booker T., I have an expert in the time, African-American guy uh, in Anderson. Let me move forward with this. Now, I'm not telling you that you're going to read Teddy Roosevelt and love what, all the things he said about race. In fact, I went to the Roosevelt Society. To, I went to Tweed, his great-grandson, who knew his great-grandmother, Teddy's wife, because she outlived him by a long time. And he said, yeah, he had blind spots. But Brian forged through it because there was more good than bad. But he was a person of his times. And that used to not be a big deal, but it's a big deal today because we want everybody to walk on water. Everyone's got to be perfect at all times. You got to be, you got to, whatever you said in, in 1901 has got to hold up in 2023. Oh, you're right, Brian. I could go find excerpts from the Lincoln Douglas debates that make Lincoln the, uh, the terrible, racist, evil person, but that's, you know, before the Civil War. Let me go back and name three people that I wrote as I take my notes. I go through your book. General Armstrong, four people, actually. General Armstrong, General and Mrs. Ruffner, 
and Ms. Mackey. They are inspiring actors and supporting roles. And it made me remind, it reminded me, you never know when you're changing the trajectory of someone's life and what they're going to end up doing. Right, Brian? I mean, these people gave Booker Mm -hmm. T. Washington a lift and an assist and confidence. And I'm glad you told their stories as well as his. You know what I had to go back and do? Look up the color of their skin. Because in Booker T. Washington didn't care. He would say General Armstrong. I would say he'd say war hero. I'm thinking to myself, it's an officer. It's got to be white. I had to go back and look him up and get his picture. And that's how little it mattered to him. Mrs. Ruffner, white, right? Ms. Mackey, white. Not that it mattered. They just took a great interest in this this black kid that had nothing, had a lot of gumption, a lot of drive, very little education, but there was a sense he wanted to learn to make something of himself. And I don't know how much time you have because I don't want to go over, but. Uh, you talk about thinking, grow rich, Napoleon Hill. You talk about Norman Vincent Peale, power of uh, positive thinking, Anthony Robbins, about manifesting things in your head. It may be happening in your broadcasting career, your writing career. But he wanted to will himself to be something. He didn't even know the number at one age. He's like, what is that? That's 18. That's the sack you have to fill up with salt. It's like, wow, what's a number? He got a dictionary. He thought it was the best thing he ever could got in his life. And then when he finally gets to Mrs. Ruffner's house and out of the salt mines, she's supposedly mean. She's not mean. She wanted things done right. And then he taught him how to clean, how to be efficient, how to hold yourself, lose your regional accent. And then he goes, what do you want? He goes, what I would like, Mrs. Ruffner, is to learn to 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 get an education. And they did. So guess what? To prove himself in Hampton College, he gets in there. He's a mess. He goes 400 miles on twelve dollars and shows up, says, I can't let you in. And they say, "Okay, you keep coming back. So why don't you go clean this classroom? Guess who knows how to clean a classroom because of Mrs. Ruffner? She goes, who helped you with that? I want to watch you clean another. He cleans it. They clean the whole school. Says you can come back in during the day and clean. At night, you can go to school. I love your line, Brian. The best student teacher. Your line is, he hadn't applied. He simply arrived. I wrote that down. That was beautiful writing. There's also a sea captain along the way that lets him work for some food. I mean, there are a thousand heroes and Booker T. Washington produces a thousand heroes, but I want to tell one story before we both run into hard breaks. And it's this, I had never heard of the cotton spaces and international exposition in September of 1895. We got to cover that speech and we got to cover his dinner with TR. So you do both of those in the time you've got Brian, because that is an amazing speech I've never heard of that, and I can't imagine doing that in Atlanta, Georgia in 1895. And then we got to talk about the dinner. Well, you just set me up for the speech. The speech is perfect. Picture this. In the segregated South with Jim Crow raging, Booker T. Washington's emerging, running this school, making a difference. He shows up to a white audience and black audience and has to address both. He gets brief right before he goes up by someone who says, what are you doing? You're giving that speech tomorrow? I'd get out of it. You can't win. But he did. Why? He said, listen, we're not going to bother you, but understand that we want a life too. We don't hate white people. Don't hate us. We're not going to get in your way, so don't get in ours. We're going to show you through our actions what we're capable of doing. Let's forget about the past and move forward. People were angered by that. They said you're too accommodating. You should have called out the South, called out white people, called out the reactionary way they, they blew up Reconstruction. And he said, no, this is the country I'm in. This is the message I want to relay to help the greatest people possible. And do I have time for the White House speech? You do have. You got to tell the story of the dinner. You've got the photo in there, but not a lot of people will know about it and they won't know the impact that it made. And, you know, this the concession speech of John McCain referenced it. He said that one was so this is goes to show you the sincerity of T.R. Teddy Roosevelt says, you know, on vice president, they meet. And then McKinley gets shot. He later dies. He becomes president. We find a letter that he wrote. Sorry, Booker T. I have to put off my visit to, to, to Tuskegee. I'm president now. So they finally said, when you're in town, come by. He finds out Booker T.'s in town. He can't text him. He sends a messenger over. It says, come see me for dinner with my family. And Booker T. has a slight hesitation, but how can I turn down the president? He goes, has a great time. They meet after. Somebody notices the guest book. Black Booker T. Washington eats with white president's family, the most raging, racist headlines you can imagine in almost every Southern newspaper happened after that. And they got blowback. Teddy stood up tall for a while. And then after a while, they stopped talking about it. In his last book, Booker T finally addressed it in detail. They were worried about Tuskegee and their partnership. They had to be smarter about it. Mark Twain would later counsel when Teddy Roosevelt went up to him and said, did I make a 
mistake. He goes, it could have been better thought out. America wasn't ready for that. And I'm embarrassed that it wasn't, but I'm, I want to write it that it was then and how far we have come as a country. And now they, um, John McCain said, instead of Booker T. Washington causing controversy as a guest, soon he goes, there'll be an African-American president that will be the host. That's and I'll close this way, Brian. Country. I hope this gets optioned for a movie because I think Booker T. Washington is forgotten by America and you have done a great service in putting this book out Thank there you. because some people are going to notice Booker T. Washington. You have a great Thanksgiving, Brian. Thank you for this book. It's a tremendous addition to America's bookshelves. And you know what? It's accessible. Everyone's going to love it. Everyone's going to love it. Brian, have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for reading it. I appreciate it. You too. My pleasure.